I guess the disconnect for me when I hear this, a lot of people will talk about tone deafness. It was Mark Emmert, the same thing with the NCAA. But there's a difference between tone deafness and simple, logical progression of thought. In other words, whatever your short-term financial interests are, any child who you explain this to would see that, well, as soon as it's explained in simple terms, well, then that will have to be canceled. So it occurs to me that it's simply people like Mark Emmert, the NCAA, people in the IOC, um, you want to wait till the last possible moment to cancel because of just the financial implications. For logistics aside, there's so much money on the line that you tr even if you think it's unlikely, you're not going to say it's off until you absolutely have to. Then it becomes a PR nightmare, though, because it seems like everyone knew this was inevitable. It, it, am I right about that? Is it simply a financial calculation? Hey, let's put this off until we absolutely have to? I, I think that's a large part of it, obviously. You know, they, they were waiting, um, perhaps hoping against hope that there would be some kind of an indication uh, that this was going to trend uh, away from uh, where it seems to be trending now. But as we've said, that that became untenable. And, and as I mentioned, Max, you know, it, it's in uh, the DNA of not just the IOC, but certainly the IOC, but many sports organizations, the, you know, the instinct, the default position is we're going to go on. The games are going to go on. And, and it's not analogous to this situation because we're dealing with a pandemic now, something unlike we've dealt with in modern history. But, you know, re mm -hmm. you know remember the IOC after the slaughter in Munich in 1972, 11 members of the Israeli delegation murdered, a German mm -hmm. policeman murdered by the Black September uh, terrorist organization. They halted the games for a day. And then they went on because right. that's what the IOC says it must do. The games must go on. Again, this is a very different situation. And we're talking about people being endangered, perhaps hundreds of thousands or millions of people endangered by the games merely going on. Um, mm -hmm. But they did take their time and they did receive a lot of criticism and pushback. And this is where we are. But clearly, they've made the right decision, even if it was a bit late. Jeremy, thank you so much for that context and perspective this morning. We always appreciate having you. Pleasure. Thanks, Jeremy. Stephen A., I want to bring you in here, guys. I want to get your take on this. And obviously, it's a unique situation here. We're used to covering the NBA, the NFL. They get a chance every year to compete. These athletes, it's every four years. It can have a different type of effect. Stephen A., where are you on this late decision by the IOC? Well, I think they dragged their feet a little bit too long, but nevertheless, even though they came late to the uh, they came late to the situation, they're here. Um, and the reality is, it was the right decision. There should not have been a delay. This should have, this decision should have been made. Uh, to be quite honest with you, at least a week ago, or at least around the time that the NBA and the NHL had canceled, uh, has suspended their play, that Major League Baseball has suspended its play. Here's the reality of the situation: you have. Uh, individuals, athletes that have been training for years upon years uh, for this moment. So what happens? You know, the Olympic Games hadn't been canceled. They're sitting up there flying in the wind. I don't think the IOC realizes that by delaying this decision, you may have jeopardized even more individuals because you knew that those athletes suspecting that the games may indeed continue definitely had to be ready, which means that they, the yeah. level of safety in terms of social distancing that you were asking the world to practice, they were unable to do so because they had to go out there and train and to make sure that they didn't dip in terms of their preparation in any way. So you were jeopardizing those athletes by not suspending these games. You were jeopardizing them by putting yeah. them in a position where they felt compelled to continue to train and what have you. And by doing that to them, you may have endangered even more people throughout this world because of your ill-advised decision to delay making this very decision that you should have made. So it's inexcusable. It's unfortunate that they took this long, but thank God they finally reached this conclusion because I spoke to a couple of Olympians, and they swore up and down. This was the decision that they wanted. It was the right decision. It was just a bit late. The IOC gets zero credit from me for making any decision because they didn't make a decision except for the wrong one. There was a chance to make a decision with everything you just laid out, Stephen A. There was a chance. So, Molly, Stephen A., when people say things in the media like, 
Well, they finally came to this. No, the, fu- the, the, the time is the whole thing. When you make the call mm-hmm. is the decision. You know who gets credit for coming to the right decision? Adam Silver. Adam Silver, he was decisive. He did when it became obvious what the inevitable would be. He made the call. He gets credit, not Mark Emmer. The NCAA didn't do a damn thing. They canceled the games. No, they had no choice. The IOC here had no choice. So they made no decision other than postponing making the decision. That's the choice they made. They deserve and receive from me at this moment precisely zero credit. And let me say this also. Remember, there's not a cancel. Mm-hmm. There's not a cancellation that took place here, guys. It's a postponement, a suspension. Yes. A year right. later, One the year. same kind of dollars you were anticipating to, that were coming to you this summer, it's simply coming next summer. That's all. Meanwhile, the athletes themselves get to practice safety in terms of social distancing. They get to be around their family and loved ones without worrying about jeopardizing them, we hope. And you still buy yourself an additional year to prepare for those games. So, therefore, we expect them to be even more prepared than they may have been Mm -hmm. already, not to mention the fact that they'll be safer and nobody's losing any opportunities. It's just being delayed because the world is on pause right now. It's not like somebody is gaining an unfair advantage. There is no unfair advantage here. Everybody is suffering during the same situation.